wall and welcome to Tail Inferno. My name is Charlotte and today we're going to be talking about point of view. Now point of view, what is it? Well, I mean, our point of view is on pretty much everything that we do. We live our life. It's from our point of view. We talk about a story about our day. It's from our point of view. You know, things like that. We just, we talk about our opinions. That's our point of view. You're getting the point there. Point of view is pretty much who sees it, who is viewing the situation. Now, it gets a little bit complicated depending on what your, I suppose, your text is or the medium that you're doing your storytelling on. I mean, if you're going to be writing, say, essays or you're doing a news broadcast, a point of view will generally just be the person who's telling the story, who is generally the essayist or the journalist. Even if a journalist has to be as super objective as possible, they've chosen the angle. It's their point of view at the end of the day. Yeah. But when we're talking about creative storytelling, so that could be written books or movies or TV shows or video games, the point of view can become very complicated because this doesn't necessarily have to be with the author and that's where the narrator kicks in. So the narrator is the kind of point of view that gets chosen, I suppose. So the storyteller gets to choose what type of narrator they have. Now the first one I want to talk about is first person point of view or first person narration. Now what that is, is where you're talking like when you're writing or the, the point of view is very much things like I did this or we did this things like that, which is very intimate and personal. It's a really good way to be able to connect with the audience or with the reader, or whoever is listening to the story. It's a great way for them to connect because suddenly when they read, I did this or we did that, suddenly they think they're in the story because that's what they're thinking. I did that action and therefore I am this character. Therefore I am very connected to this book. And yeah, it's a really cool concept to be able to know that when you're reading a book or you're watching a movie or whatever, you are connecting to that character in that very intimate way. There's a different kind of version of first person as well, which is a very much a detached type of first person point of view. And that's where the narrator is someone who's not necessarily close to the issues in the story. So they're not actually in the main events of the story, but they're kind of witnessing it. So it's someone, so for example, you're writing a story and there's been an accident or there's a huge argument that's going on. And that's the whole point of your story. Now you could write it from the perspective of someone who's been in the accident or is part of the argument or part of this event that's happening. Or you can take a different route, which would be to go and use the perspective or the point of view of a character that's actually detached from that situation. So someone who's just seeing it, maybe they're sitting at a cafe that is next to where the accident occurred or they're sitting on a bus where the argument is happening and suddenly you've got this detached first person. It's still very intimate with that character, but the person, the, the audience or the reader isn't really connecting with that event so much. They're connecting with it as a witness, but they're not deeply involved in the event that's going on. And then there's third person, which is where there's a lot of she, she did this, he did that, stuff like that which isn't as intimate as the I did this and we did that, but there still is the ability, like there still is an ability to connect with the character. Third person really can focus on one character. So when you're reading about this one character, the feelings and so forth, even if it's in the third person, you can still have a really deep connection with that, uh, that character. There's no reason why you can't. And that happens a lot in stories. It's just not as deeply intimate. You're not thinking I am doing this. This It is another person. There's also a type of narrator or point of view, which is the detached one, where basically the narrator is very much very detached from the situation. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means that say an event is occurring and there's really no assumptions made or opinions put across or even descriptions of what's really going on. It's very dry. It's very much like this character over here did that and this character over here did this and so forth. There's no assumption of what those characters are feeling or why they're doing those actions. It's just a very straight, dry event by event by event by event. This action happened, this action happened, this action happened. And then the final point of view or type of narrator that I want to be talking about today is the omniscient narrator. Basically, what an omniscient narrator is, is a narrator that has a very godlike perspective on what's happening in the story. So it can change perspectives very quickly. So it'd be like 
this character here is thinking and feeling this way and doing this action right now and this character over here is watching him do that and this is how this person is feeling by watching that person and here's his backstory and then we're going to swap over to this person over here that was on the wall watching them or looking across the wall and this is how they're feeling it's very much not sing like you don't single out a character to focus on you're going across different ones which provides a really interesting array of perspectives for a reader or an audience to take in because suddenly we know more than the characters do and that's a really cool way of doing so well at least I think I think it's very cool because you could be sitting there reading a book and then suddenly you're in this position where you know that a particular character is going to perform a certain action but then the perspective changes and you're at this other character and suddenly you're just like, what? Wait, no, this character needs to know right now that this is about to happen and they don't know. And you have to sit there in this almost agonizing pain knowing that something is about to happen and the character doesn't know, but you do. And I think that is wicked and that is a great way to get people connected. Or at least that's a great way to get me connected to the story because I will yell at whatever is going on being like, excuse me, excuse me. It doesn't have to all be in the one chapter though or a one, like in one section that an omniscient narrator can happen, like a different kind of perspective shift. A lot of stories that I've read recently have been omniscient but have changed perspectives per chapter, which is a very cool way of doing things because then you get chunks of perspectives rather than continuous flurries of perspectives. <laughs> but yes, the omniscient narrator, as I said, is a very godlike point of view and you just get a perspective on everything. Now there are other perspectives out there that I haven't spoken spoken about, like something like a second person perspective, things like that, they do exist. There are other perspectives and types of narrators out there, even like say the unreliable narrator. Different point of views, different narrators, different types all out there that you can go and look up yourself. I'll probably talk about them in future vlogs and so forth. So, you know, keep an eye out for that. But in this point, in this video, all I have spoken about is the first person, third person, detached, and omniscient. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Like this video if you liked it, subscribe to the Tale Inferno YouTube channel if you want to watch more, or go check out the website at www.taleinferno.com and you can check out everything else and get involved with everything, because why not? It's time to ignite the story within ourselves. 2019 is the year. And yeah, that's it. Remember to ignite the story, and I'll see you again soon. Bye!